No need to be afraid of the monster by my side. He wants to be your friend. I'm your host, Boink. I'm here today with my co-hosts, Noah. Say hi, Noah. Say it louder. We can't hear you if you don't speak up. Hi. Hi. And Avery. Say Hello. hi. Hello. Today we have a guest, Cassidy Carlisle, and she is, uh, let's see, I, I don't know if I remember, the, it's like your environmental coordinator or something like that. I'm an environmental assistant ah, for the that's, city that's of Burnsville. An assistant, okay. And so you work at the recycling center? I work for Dakota Valley Recycling. That's the name. That's right. Devo Dakota Valley Recycling. So we're going to talk today about recycling. Avery, do you have questions for Cassidy? Yes. Why is recycling important? Ah. Recycling is important because if we don't recycle, then we have to take materials from our earth that are typically being used for animals or ecosystems that are functioning perfectly normally. Uh, when we recycle, we can reuse something that's already in the system. It's already been taken out of the environment. Uh, when we don't recycle, things go to the landfill. And when that happens, they don't decompose very well. And so gases go up into the air, gases called methane, which are really bad for our environment. We breathe that in, animals breathe that in, and then liquid called leachate leaches into the ground, pretty much toxifying our groundwater and our soil doing the same thing and not really letting us have a healthy environment for us to grow our gardens in or for animals to live healthily in. Yeah, I've seen pictures of like, even like in the oceans, like straws and, mm -hmm. and plastics like hurting fish and animals and that can happen here on land too, right? Yep, in Minnesota. yeah, yeah. So it, sometimes things will somehow get into, from the landfill, they might get into lakes or streams and then yeah, they can ha that can happen right here or with a stream. It might somehow end up into the ocean and mm. do exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. What else you got for uh, Avery? Any other questions? Or um, no? What types of things can we recycle? Yeah, it sounds like we, you know, there are some things that do go into a landfill, uh -huh. but not always. And most of us in our house, we have like a recycling bin and a trash bin, but I don't know if I really know what I'm supposed to throw where. Well, lucky for you, I brought a bin of things <gasps> to show you Perfect. examples. Oh, so it's like a little game we can play? Yeah. A guessing game? What if I ask you what, I'll hold something up and you can tell me if it can be recycled. Okay, okay. let's do it. Let's do it. What do you guys think? All right, let's try it. What about an egg carton? Um, I think it would be in trash. Oh, so trash. you can, it's not wrong to recycle it because it is made out of paper. However, by the time an egg carton is made out of paper, it's been the paper has been recycled so many times, it's on its last leg. So the paper fibers in here are very, very tiny. If you have compost at, in your house or if, you, if your hauler picks up compost, you would ideally compost this. Um, but it's not, again, it's not wrong to recycle it. Well, there you go. Compost. That's our word of the day. Let's make that our word of the day. Everybody say, word of the day. Word, word of the day. day. What is compost? Because we said recycling and trash but I don't even know what composting is. So composting is when you break down materials, typically food or uh, used napkins or egg cartons, and that will break down with oxygen. And so that allows something to break down in a way that doesn't create uh, the gases that is created in a landfill. Um, and so when, a la when something that is compostable goes to a landfill, it's breaking down without oxygen, and that is what's producing the methane that goes into our air. So are you saying the egg carton is compostable, not recyclable, and not trash? Uh, ideally compostable. If you don't have that, you can put it into the recycling, if you do have that. And if you have no, no other option, trash is, I guess, where you have to go. Okay, well let's try another one. Okay. 
What about a soda can? Soda can. I think I know the answer to this one. What do you guys think? Recycling mm. or trash? Recycling. Yes. Yes, you got recycling. It. So a soda can can actually be made back into a soda can and on the shelves again in two months. Whoa. That's a pretty quick turnaround. Right. Noah, did you know that? Recy recycle the soda cans? Yeah. Okay. All right. What else? Good. Uh, what about cardboard? Cardboard. Like a roll, a cardboard box? Mm, I think it's recycling. Recycling? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes. All right. Because Yay. it's paper. Awesome. Right? Yeah. It's great. Okay. So I have okay. kind of a tough one for you guys. Whoa. Get what about this? It's a black plastic tray. Yeah, like we've seen those in our house, like food, microwave food or something. Yeah. I trash think it or? It goes in trash. It does go in trash. Do you know why it goes in trash? Uh, that doesn't make sense. It's plastic. Can't we recycle it? Yes. That's a good question. Well, no, you can't recycle it, but <laughs> that's because it's black. And black mm. plastic, black anything, even if it is plastic, which is typically recyclable, black absorbs light. Correct? Okay. Yep. So when it goes into the recycling facility through the system, there's a laser that will read an object and determine what it's made out of, but the laser is completely absorbed by the black, and so it doesn't comprehend that there's anything there or that there's oh. a material that's recyclable, and so it will just go through the system and never get recycled. So through the regular system, but is there a way to recycle plastic if it's black uh, no. another way? No, unfortunately there isn't. Not at all. Okay. Mm -mm. Hmm. Well, that was, a, that was a tough one, definitely. But that's good to know because a lot of us would probably do that. Right, right. And now so that's that brings like up another question. What if you put something in the recycle bin that's not supposed to go there? What happens then? So if that happens too much within one bin, uh, then it will just get thrown out and everything goes to the trash. Oh, okay. So, so it doesn't break a machine aware. or anything like that, but it would end up in no. the landfill. No, there is, uh, there is a problem with plastic bags, however. Um, because it's plastic, people think that you can recycle it, and you can recycle it, but you have to bring it to a special facility. Oh. So like plastic shopping bags that you get at the grocery yep. store, you can bring that back to the grocery store, and they have a place that you can put those so that they will become recycled again. Perfect. Okay. Or made into something else. And those that's because when it goes into the recycling system, it's so flimsy, it just gets caught up in the gears, and they have to shut down the whole system for hours to unclog it, basically. That would be bad. Yes. Okay. What else you got? Anything else? I do have a soup can. Soup can. That's kind of like the Pepsi can she showed us. Do you think that's for recycling? Mm. Yeah. Recycling. Yeah, it is. Yes. Good. All right. And Good. one thing to be aware of, there's usually a top on here. Yeah. And when you do recycle it, you want to put the top back in and then crush the top, crush the can inward so that the top doesn't come out and cut anybody who's working in the recycling oh, facility. Yeah, you gotta be careful those recycling workers. Mm -hmm. They wanna put something dangerous. Yeah. Now, what, what about like food on our recyclables and stuff? So say we have a white plastic food yeah. pan or something that can get recycled, but do we yeah. have to wash it off before? Like what are some good practices when you're recycling? Yeah, uh, so if you do have something like this can and you have some leftover soup inside, you do wanna rinse it out um, and you don't have to scrub it. You don't have to put it through the dishwasher or anything. But that's just so that the people who are dealing with it don't get their hands dirty. And when it goes into a solution to be broken down, there's no mucky stuff in there getting in the way. Right. Okay. Good. Caitlin or uh, Avery, do you have more questions for Cassidy? Yes. When and how do we recycle? You can recycle any time of day, anywhere. There should be a bin available to you if there's a trash bin available to you. So at home, at school, at uh, really any facility, any park, there should be recycling available. And when you do see those, there should be labels on them too. Just like on this bin, there's a label here with pictures, sometimes there are words. And when you have something, you can look at what you have and look at the label and see, does this look similar? Can I recycle this here? Here's a big one that I see with, with kids because we have toys at home and stuff. Batteries. Can you yeah. throw batteries in the trash or should you be recycling them? What do you do with batteries? So that is something that needs to be taken to a special facility. Um, here in Egan, actually, there's something called the recycling zone that will take batteries. Um, other things like light bulbs, that also goes to the recycling zone. And that's because it can be recycled, but it will not be recycled properly in your typical recycling bin. That has to go to a place that will take it apart and take out the things that are still useful 
and properly dispose of the things that are hazardous. So maybe we should have a bin in our house for some of those specialty things. Yes. And then every few months take it to recycling zone. Yes, that's yeah, perfect. That's a great idea. Any other questions? Noah, do you have any questions? What's your question? Uh, oh. You don't know. That's okay. If you think of a question, do you have any jokes? We're going to do a joke of the day. Everybody say, joke of the day! Joke of the day! Joke of the day! All right. Do you guys have a joke, Avery? or, do you, or I Cassidy, have a joke. You have a joke. Okay, what's your joke? It's not recycling related, but it's okay, funny. that's fine. What does a mermaid wash her fins with? I don't, I don't know. know. What does a mermaid wash her fins with? You don't know? It's tide. Tide! <laughs> <laughs> like ocean tide. That's funny. Uh -huh. That's, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. Don't we, don't we guys? Yeah. Avery says yes. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely check out some more resources about recycling. We Good. appreciate it. Good. Absolutely. All right. Bye, everybody. Now, how many L's does it take to change a light bulb? Do you know? Five L's. Five L's. That's right. One to change the light bulb and four to stand on each other's shoulders. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Knock, knock. Who's there? Yeah. Yeah, who? I'm excited to see you, too. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Iva. Iva who? I have a sore hand from knocking. <laughs> have you seen trash around your house or out in the community? Maybe a candy wrapper or a bottle, you know, left in a park or something like that? Well, did you pick it up? Did you put it somewhere? You know, it's important that we not only pick up garbage and keep our homes and community looking nice, but that we learn how to recycle and reuse as much as possible. Plastic straws, bottles, and other things we might think of as garbage can hurt animals and destroy our natural world. It's important that we keep our trees, our parks, rivers, and lakes clean. Yeah, and we can do that by simply putting our trash and recyclables in the right places. Hello everyone, I'm the Story Lady, and I have a story for you, and it's called Mr. Buckingham. Mr. Buckingham was a tattered old mule with a shabby old mane. Nonetheless, he had little to complain. His tail was thin, nubby, and bare. Mr. Buckingham looked funny with all his missing hair. His fur was tangled, knotted, and unattached, causing ball spots and a ginormous ball patch. Mr. Buckingham had a red square shape that covered his eyes, a yellow triangle on his nose, and a blue and green circle on each of his thighs birthmarks others seemed to despise. The other horses had beautiful hair on their tails, especially the Stallions, Shetlands, and the Clydesdales. Mr. Buckingham was always bullied and mistreated. He refused to feel sad, angry, or defeated. Stallion Stanley was especially cruel. He called Mr. Buckingham a stubborn old mule. Clara Lily Clydesdale had a beautiful tail that was covered with fairy dust. She was sure it was beautiful, shiny, and robust. The Shetlands were easy to ride and mount. They had short legs, but their bodies were very stout. Soon the Shetlands invited Buckingham to be their friend. Their tails swayed happily in the wind. Although Buckingham's pelt had not a hint of luster or shine, he would become the world's greatest tap dancing equine. Although there was a chance that his efforts might fail, Buckingham wrote a letter, stuffed it in an envelope, licked the stamp, and put it in the outgoing mail. Many days had gone by. He decided lost mail was the reason why. How he dreamed of the Tappan Yaki show. The other horses dreamed of the Bucking Horse Rodeo. Oh, but one bright afternoon, there was a special telegram. 
and lo and behold, it was addressed to Mr. Buckingham. Dear Mr. Buckingham, we would like to inform you in advance. Our annual rodeo is only for bucking horses, not for old mules who want to tap dance. Mr. Buckingham was sad and disappointed about the news. He decided to do something that was sure to bring him great reviews. Soon he crafted a pink tutu and four perfect U-shaped metal horseshoes. When he was all done, he began gluing the sparkling shoes on his hooves one by one. Soon there was a tap here and a tap there. There were tap, tap, tap sounds everywhere. Mr. Buckingham was proud of the noises that rang out beneath his feet. Suddenly he was sure that the tap dance routine was finally complete. With his hind legs together and his hooves on his hips, Buckingham did two double backflips. He spun in the air 360 degrees. He did the splits without bending his knees. Buckingham began dancing in one spot. He did a handstand and a cartwheel and then the robot. The toe stand was without mishap. He did the moonwalk, the nene, and then a perfect heel tap. With only a measly strand of hair, held tightly to his old leather duffel. He did two cartwheels and a backflip and then the three beat shuffle. The music stopped and there was a pause. The crowd stood up and gave Buckingham a very long applause. Although he was teased and was treated very cruel, Mr. Buckingham was a talented shabby old mule. The end. Hey everybody, I'm standing here with the Jolly Pops, and Billy is one of the Jolly Pops. And you guys are going to sing a song for us today, and it's, it's kind of a special song. It's one of your first ones, right? Yes, indeed. It's called Mama Goes Choo Choo. Yeah, Mama Goes Choo Choo, indeed. So I have a few guesses of what that might be about. Well, I'll tell you what, Boink, in order to do this song, I need to wear a special hat. Yeah, what, what kind of hat is that? Well, I brought it along. Do you know what kind of hat this is? Oh, I, I kind of recognize that one. Um... Let's see, is it an old-timey uh, choo-choo train hat, like yeah, a conductor? Yeah, a conductor's cap or an yeah. engineer's cap, absolutely. And I brought something else along, too. What? Listen to this, because I think there's something approaching from over there, Boink. Can oh. you see it over there? Okay. Well, um, maybe if you can't see it... I have to use my imagination, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> but maybe you can hear it. What does this sound like, Boink? <laughs> Oh, it's a train whistle. It is a train, and a train's coming right here into the station, and we're going to take a ride on it, the Jolly Pops. And any kids out there who wants to come along? Yeah, that sounds great. And while we're doing it, we can do the locomotion. Do you know how to do the locomotion? Old-timey dance like uh, this? You, I don't know. Move around. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. And one thing, though, that's even more fun to do during this song, about when our grown-ups get on the train or go to commute to work and how it can be a little tough, but... It's something I had to do, and it's, you know, not that big a deal. Oh, okay, so you, you or, or your wife took a train to work? Yes, Mom oh. used to take a train every morning, so, oh. and, and Daddy every now and then, too. Okay. But one thing we can do out there while we're singing this song is ring our train whistle. Who can ring their train whistle? Toot, toot. Not hard to yeah. do. Just put your hand toot, up in the toot. air and say, toot, toot. And Justin what? and Eric are going to supply the fuel. What kind of train are we doing? Electric train today? Oh, yeah. Electric train. All right, awesome. let's get this party started, Boink. What do you say? Uh, let's do it. Take it away, guys. All right. Well, here we go. All aboard the Jolly Pops Express. Here we go. All people move around. They're moving around the nation. A way to get from here to there's a thing called transportation. Some people drive their car, some people take the bus. Some people walk and ride their bike or hop the train like us. Here we go. Mama go choo choo, mama go choo choo, mama go choo choo, mama go to work. Daddy go choo choo, daddy go choo choo, daddy go choo choo, daddy go to Let's work. bring our train whistle out there. Toot toot, toot toot. All right, all aboard, let me hear you ring it. Astronauts are different. They don't need to take the train. They can ride a rocket round the moon, way out and out of space. But if you are on Earth and you need to get around, your parents know a simple way to get themselves downtown. Mama go choo-choo, mama go choo-choo, mama go choo-choo, mama go to work. Daddy go choo-choo, daddy go choo-choo. 
Well, that's it for today's show, everybody. Did you guys have a good time? It was a pretty good show, right? Yeah. Even Squeedle liked it down there. Well, anyways, thanks for watching the show. We appreciate everything you do. We appreciate Egan uh, Community Television for hosting our show. You can watch us online at imboink.com or Egan TV. Uh, we've got the website down here. So, everybody, say bye to our friends in the audience. Bye! Boy, that sure sounds good.